psychological abuse is huge. huge. I mean, mm-hmm. physical abuse is obvi- obviously it's there. Mm-hmm. Sexual abuse is very much component of that physical abuse again mm-hmm. because of the how women think that if I'm married, my body belongs to my husband. Mm-hmm. He can do what he likes. Mm-hmm. It's quite hidden. Yeah. Common eye to ipol kaanan na den daana. Adini endengil ni diil namuk address jiano. Alengil namlu sradhi kenda daai ta. Oru family end kairingal sradhi kena mande njanga kuru oru tip alengil oru advice share yam bato. നമസ്കാരം ഞാൻ സിന്ധു പുന്നോസ് നമ്മുടെ മലയാളം എഫ് എമ്മിൻ്റെ അറിഞ്ഞതും അറിയാത്തതും എന്ന അഭിമുഖ പരമ്പരയുടെ പുതിയൊരു അധ്യായത്തിലേക്ക് എല്ലാവർക്കും സ്വാഗതം ഇന്നത്തെ അറിഞ്ഞതും അറിയാത്തതും ഇതിൽ നമുക്ക് അതിഥിയായി കിട്ടിയിരിക്കുന്നത് ഷീല നായരാണ് ഷീല നായരെ ഞാൻ ഇൻട്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ എനിക്ക് പ്രേക്ഷകരോട് പറയാനുള്ളത് ഡൊമസ്റ്റിക് വയലൻസ് അഥവാ ഗാർഹിക പീഡനം ഈ ഒരു കാര്യം നമ്മളൊരു പത്തിരുപത് വർഷം മുമ്പ് സംസാരിക്കാൻ തുടങ്ങുമ്പോൾ നമ്മൾ പലർക്കും തോന്നും അയ്യോ അങ്ങനെയുണ്ടോ ഇല്ല അന്നല്ല മുമ്പും ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു പക്ഷേ ഏകദേശം രണ്ട് പതിറ്റാണ്ടുകൾക്ക് മുമ്പ് ഈ വിഷയത്തെക്കുറിച്ച് താല്പര്യം തോന്നുകയും തനിക്ക് ഈ ഒരു ഡൊമസ്റ്റിക് വയലൻസ് അനുഭവിക്കുന്ന സ്ത്രീകൾക്ക് തനിക്ക് എന്ത് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റും ഏത് രീതിയിൽ സപ്പോർട്ട് ചെയ്യാം എന്ന് സ്വയം തീരുമാനിക്കുകയും ആ മേഖലയിൽ ഇവിടെ ന്യൂസിലൻഡിൽ അഗ്രഗണ്യയാകുകയും ചെയ്ത ഷീല നായരാണ് ഇന്ന് നമുക്ക് അതിഥിയായി ലഭിച്ചിരിക്കുന്നത് നമുക്ക് സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യാം ഷീല സ്വാഗതം നമസ്കാരം താങ്ക് യു സെന്ദു ഷീല ഞാൻ ഇൻട്രൊഡക്ഷനിൽ പറഞ്ഞ പോലെ തന്നെ വർഷങ്ങൾക്ക് മുമ്പ് നമ്മൾ ഡൊമസ്റ്റിക് വയലൻസിനെ കുറിച്ചൊക്കെ അധികം കേട്ടുകേൾവി ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നില്ല ആ സമയത്ത് ഷീല എങ്ങനെയാണ് ഈ ഒരു ടോപ്പിക്കിലേക്ക് ഇൻസ്പയർഡ് ആയത് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അട്രാക്റ്റഡ് ആയത് സോ മൈ ജേണി ഇൻ ദിസ് ഏരിയ ഓഫ് വർക്ക് സ്റ്റാർട്ടഡ് വേ ബാക്ക് ഇൻ ടു തൗസൻഡ് ടു ഐ വാസ് എ ഫോമർ ജേർണലിസ്റ്റ് ഫ്രോം ഇന്ത്യ വിച്ച് വാസ് ഓൾമോസ്റ്റ് ഫിഫ്റ്റീൻ ഇയേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് മൈ കരിയർ um having migrated to new zealand with my then husband at that time um i did some journalism work mm. and um it was only about a year or so later that i really got to know about shakti mm-hmm. and um, and shakti is a sanghatana yes okay. shakti is an uh, agency that specializes in uh, domestic violence intervention and prevention work mm-hmm. and i quite met them by chance actually at mm-hmm. one of the workshops on cv formatting you know when we are new migrants we are called we are asked to go for various workshops mm. you know towards integration in new zealand <laughs> so me and my husband at that time we went um, to one of these workshops uh-huh. and um, mm-hmm. one of the presenters there who was from shakti he was a male social worker at that time um, i think he kind of recognized me from my um, columns in mm. in bombay mm-hmm. and um he came up after the workshop and said i think i know you and i thought oh, okay <laughs> small world <laughs> yeah and then um that, then he told me a lot about shakti and he said it's not just this work they do a lot of critical work for women and children mm-hmm. and someone like you could be very useful in that area of work so that's how i first got introduced to shakti mm-hmm. and um i i told him that you know i think because it's a charitable organization i don't want to get paid but mm. whatever i can i'll do voluntarily mm. i'll find another job oh. probably in journalism mm. and i'll do a newsletter mm. for shakti mm. how about that and he said yeah that's a good start <laughs> so that's how my journey with shakti started mm. so and he kind of persisted he kept saying that you know someone with your skills and abilities would be very useful to shakti so why don't you apply for a job they have a lot of vacancies mm-hmm. and i quite still resisted mm. because you know in our minds we think charitable entities ngos or something that we work as volunteers you ah, know they are ah. not we don't expect to be paid, paid. Mm. in an ngos for mm. me it was a totally new concept mm. and then he told me that the ngo sector is a very strong sector in new zealand it's very well supported by government and it's a paid sector uh-huh. they're very strong entities here so um there were vacancies and he told me look i want you to send your cv <laughs> 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 so I sent my CV and you know I got hired right away um, right. Uh, in the women's area 
uh, to do some management and development work. So mm-hmm. I started managing our 24-7 crisis line at that time. Mm-hmm. And we had one safe house. So I know the concept is not very familiar uh, in, in India. India. Mm. But this is called Women's Refuge mm. or a safe house. Mm-hmm. So what happens um, for these houses are for women and children who are facing abuse in mm-hmm. their family life mm-hmm. and want to leave the situation and feel safe oh. and be able to rest and heal and then decide what they want to do with the relationship you know oh, yeah. so we had one such safe house there so they're very confidential houses it's only known to emergency services and shakti mm-hmm. so um so that's where they can hide it's more like they can hide away from everyone mm-hmm. else and uh, you know recuperate from their abusive experiences So um and I worked closely this when I met the founder as well whose name is Farida Sultana mm-hmm. she's a lady from Bangladesh mm-hmm. uh, and she and the group of women had set up Shakti in 1995 oh. uh, while I was listening to you Sheila um uh, I learned that Shakti as an organization has grown yes nationally grown i safe houses grown i does that mean that domestic violence is also is growing Yes, I think domestic violence unfortunately, you know, there's this thing that we we when we women sit around in Shakti we say I wish we could all close shop and go home, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> But then we know that's just an illusion, you know. Because as long as um societies exist, cultures exist and we don't seek to change the way we act and behave, domestic violence will continue, you know. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't say there's any decrease in domestic violence mm-hmm. but it is also possible that the higher reporting that we're hearing year after year mm. is because of greater awareness so more and more women are coming forward mm. so that could be a possibility as well mm. but it's very much there in New Zealand domestic violence is quite high compared to other OECD countries oh it's surprising to yeah yeah and that. generally worldwide this it is said one in three women experience abuse or violence in their lifetime Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's a trend in ethnicity that you've seen in the country. You know, Eastern culture is not the same as Eastern culture. Do you observe that? I think I wouldn't like to single out any particular ethnic, ethnic, ethnicity or ethnic mm-hmm. culture, mm-hmm. but there are peculiarities to each, mm-hmm. each ethnic group. Like, mm-hmm. you know, the Middle Eastern have more... from our experience at Shakti mm-hmm. we've seen more honor based violence mm-hmm. cases in the middle eastern culture mm-hmm. from the indian culture specifically dowry mm-hmm. is huge mm-hmm. happening here so you mean to say that even the dowry issue is happening even they're yes. coming oh it continues oh, that's shocking yeah very shocking cases we've dealt with as well mm-hmm. so that's huge forced marriage is also an issue mm-hmm. um then you have the uh, the chinese and korean and the japanese they come with their own issues as well mm. arising from very strong patriarchal cultures you know but all even us mm. even our indian culture is very strongly patriarchal mm. you know and while there is good and bad to everything mm. um you know the patriarchal culture has to be balanced it mm. has to be balanced out where a woman's voice is heard mm. you know mm. and i hope we come to um, see a society where we don't talk about patriarchal cultures anymore endu konda aayirikam ingane oru misbehaving allengil oru abusive nature avarku undayittullathu avare upbringing kondano drugs alcohol adano endu aayirikam idinde oru root cause ennu sheelikku thonunu i think that's a good question mm. sindhu because yeah. um it's not about blaming the person mm. yeah it's about looking at the behavior of the person mm. so we see behavior we see sorry we see domestic violence as mm. a behavioral issue ah adha njan choichu it is a behavioral mm. issue and those behavioral issues come from lived experiences mm. yeah as a child what are we seeing exactly what are we believing what is our belief system mm. what are our values mm. what are we witnessing yeah these are the influences of our lives in our early formative years mm. and they stay within us mm. and grow and those lived experiences inform our world view mm. and how we see the world mm. okay so this 
kind of starts quite early in life mm. yeah so the differences in cultures as well like for example i'll give my own experience so mm. i was married to a man from the north is mm. punjabi mm. yeah so it's my own choice mm. <laughs> um but i didn't stay for more than 2 years because mm. i noticed the fundamental difference in how we treat women because mm. i'm from the south mm. you know mm. um and i and i have seen my mother being equal to my father mm. Mm. my mother is a very empowered woman mm. um i think she she's got a degree in she's got a bachelor's degree in economics and literature mm. Mm. and my father was also quite well educated mm. so i've seen a very equal relationship mm-hmm. between them mm-hmm. so when i married this man and his behavior towards me and the other women mm. was appalling mm. which i saw only after marriage mm. <laughs> <laughs> and that was something that didn't sit comfortably with me and he had alcohol issues as well mm. so that there was a bit of abuse that happened and mm. for me it's not okay mm. So even though I had no support in New Zealand I did not know anyone mm. I still walked away. Oh. Because I think as women it's very important for us to value ourselves our womanhood. Mm. Yeah. When when someone raises their hand on you they're actually kind of touching your fundamental human rights. Mm. in a way that can actually scar you not just physically emotionally, emotionally. and we see in this area of work <coughs> sorry we see in this area of work that domestic violence is not all physical yeah it's a psychological abuse that is almost invisible we don't see it mm. yeah mm. only the person who's experiencing it feels it mm. yeah mm. and psychological abuse can be deeply scarring because it takes a long time to get back your self esteem your sense of self worth your Absolutely. confidence mm. takes a long time if you have a physical injury you ha- you it heals mm. and you have a scar left mm. behind it reminds you once in a while mm. but the emotional injury that you have stays. stays for a very long time mm. you know it affects your core it affects your core and i think in many cases that i've seen it crushes the spirit of the women mm. and that's what domestic violence does now uh, as far as those who perpetrate it mm. you know mm. this is kind of learned behavior or inculcated behavior from their own lived experiences and world views mm. yeah mm. so we might say oh um so and so was abusive mm, to his wife mm. for the purpose of our interview i'll mm. use a gendered mm. language mm. yeah because in reality uh, the maximum cases of police cases of male assaults is male assaults female so mm. over 90% of cases is male assaults mm-hmm. female so it's predominantly gender gender yeah mm. so let's say if a, if a man raises his hand on his wife because mm. he's stressed at work mm. um but does he hit his boss because he's stressed at work does he hit his colleagues because he's stressed at work no why does he come back mm-hmm. and hit his wife so that's where the concept of ownership is mm. and as long as women are going to be owned mm. by their husbands mm. you know so as to say and feel like their property mm. um domestic violence will continue uh shile ipa parayuvayirunnu korchu nammude abusive behavior undaagunnathu oru pakshe nammal kandu padikkunnathayirikkam or it is inculcated in ourselves mm. pala reethiyil aagam ipa parayna pole ende maathapithakal adu cheyidana njan kandadengil mm. Uh, naturally enikku or feeling ana it is okay mm. to do that enna thonunu angane parayumba njane nammade malayalam fm radio aayidondu njan chodikkana nammade oru culture anusariche um adu kandu valaranulla chances are very less mm. compared to other states in india anna njan parayan uddeshikkunne ennittum enginiyana ingane oru attitude nammade purushanmarude idil കൂടുതലായി കാണുന്നത് ബിക്കോസ് യു സെഡ് നയൻറ്റി പെർസെൻറ്റേജ് ഇസ് മെയിൽ അബ്യൂസിങ് ഫീമെയിൽ അതുകൊണ്ട് ഞാൻ ചോദിച്ചതാണ് സ്റ്റിൽ എന്തായിരിക്കാം നമ്മുടെ നമ്മുടെ കൾച്ചർ ഇത്രയും സ്ട്രോങ് ആണ് ട്രഡീഷണലി സ്ട്രോങ് ആണ് റിലീജിയസ് ആണ് നമ്മൾ ലിറ്ററേറ്റ് ആണ് ഓൾമോസ്റ്റ് നയൻറ്റി നയൻ പെർസെൻറ്റ് ലിറ്ററേറ്റ് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ആണ് കേരള എന്നിട്ടും എന്തുകൊണ
എന്ന് ശീലിക്ക് തോന്നുന്നു so this is again um like it is said that we tend to think that domestic violence happens in poorer communities or in illiterate communities mm. but our experience at shakti mm. and has taught us that domestic violence occurs irrespective of education mm. irrespective of whether you're rich or poor mm. because it's a behavioral issue mm. yeah so in our refuge we've had doctors surgeons engineers phd holders mm yeah and their husbands are equally educated so it's got nothing to do with education mm. it's got to do with male privilege mm it's got to do with patriarchy mm. it's got to do with how women are seen mm in our culture mm. so that's where the issue is yeah and the little point ana sheila parnad ബിഹേവിയറൽ ഇഷ്യൂ ആണത് അപ്പോൾ ഈ വിക്ടിംസ് എങ്ങനെയാണ് ശക്തിയെ അപ്രോച്ച് ചെയ്യുന്നത് എങ്ങനെയാണ് അതിൻ്റെ ഒരു പ്രോസസ്സ് ന്യൂസിലൻഡിലെ പ്രോസസ്സും ഞാൻ ചോദിക്കുന്നു ശക്തിയുടെ പ്രോസസ്സും ഇതൊന്ന് നമ്മുടെ ലെസണേഴ്സിന് വേണ്ടി ഒന്ന് എക്സ്പ്ലെയിൻ ചെയ്യാമോ സോ ശക്തി ഡസൻ എൻഗേജ് ഇൻ ഹ്യൂജ് പബ്ലിസിറ്റി എസ് യു മൈ നോ ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ്സ് ഫോർ എ സ്പെസിഫിക് റീസൺ ബിക്കോസ് വി ബിലീവ് ഇൻ ഡൂയിങ് അവർ വർക്ക് ക്വൈറ്റ്ലി ആൻഡ് ഇഫ് വിമൻ നീഡ് അസ് ദ വിൽ കോൾ അസ് ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ്സ് വാട്ട് ഇസ് ഹാപ്പനിങ് ആക്ച്വലി So the referrals come from police mm. hospitals GPs CABs mm. uh, schools mm. primary health yes. organizations primary yeah. health organizations so that's how the referrals come to mm. come to Shakti mm-hmm. and besides but the larger percentage uh, that's encouraging for us to know mm. is comes from the women themselves mm. and yeah. i know it's that uh. yeah so they they call us and mm. ask how we can support them അപ്പോൾ അവർ ശക്തിയെക്കുറിച്ച് അറിഞ്ഞ് കോണ്ടാക്റ്റ് ചെയ്യുകയാണ് യെസ് ഓക്കെ വൺസ് ദ ആർ ഇൻ ഓർ വൺസ് ദ ആർ ഇൻ യുവർ ഹാൻഡ്സ് എങ്ങനെയാണ് അവിടെ നിന്ന് കാര്യങ്ങൾ പ്രൊസീഡ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് യെസ് സോ ഫേസ്റ്റ്ലി വെൻ ദ കോൾ ഓ ക്രൈസിസ് ലൈൻ ദ വുഡ് ബി എ ബ്രീഫ് റിസ്ക് അസസ്മെൻറ് ഡൺ ടു സേ ഹൗ മച്ച് ആർ ദ അറ്റ് റിസ്ക് ഇൻ ടേംസ് ഓഫ് ദ വെൽ ബെയിങ് ഹൗ മച്ച് ആർ ദ ചിൽഡ്രൻ അറ്റ് റിസ്ക് ബിക്കോസ് ഇൻ ന്യൂസിലൻഡ് ദസ് എ ഹ്യൂജ് കൺസിഡറേഷൻ ഗിവൻ ടു ദ വെൽ ബെയിങ് ഓഫ് ചിൽഡ്രൻ യെ ലൈക്ക് വി നോ വി ഹാവ് Oranga Tamariki, which used to be called SIFS earlier, they are kind of very, very particular and that obligation is on agencies like Shakti as well. So they say, while you work with the women, you also have to make sure children are safe mm. in that household. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we have a risk assessment that we do on the phone and a bit of a safety plan. Mm-hmm. We suggest to the women, this is how you can follow. Now, if a risk is very high, mm-hmm. we have a risk analysis within our culture. Mm-hmm. So it's so a risk analysis within the cultural analysis. Mm-hmm. So if you say the risk is very high mm. then we would suggest that there are options for you mm. yeah um you can come to the safe house mm. heal think about things for a while get your children mm. your children also can come with you uh don't worry about your job if you're working don't worry about the children's school we'll sort all that mm. out mm. with you when you're there mm. then you have the option firstly most important thing is to he try and sleep because often women will tell you i haven't slept for days mm. yeah mm. sleep it out you know eat food that you want to eat mm-hmm. you know let the children sleep well emotionally shrikkum support team yes mm-hmm. yes huge so this range of services shakti offers which are given as options to the mm-hmm. women because mm-hmm. we believe in women's empowerment mm-hmm. and women's autonomy mm-hmm. so we will never compel a woman to make choices mm-hmm. that she doesn't want to mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. we always throw, show the options that are there and Wonderful. she picks and chooses what she wants and we help her facilitate the journey mm-hmm. the only thing we bear in mind is we don't want her to go towards a journey which will end in loss of life mm-hmm. you know so we will talk extensively about that possibility mm-hmm. so eventually it's she who makes the decision mm-hmm. so the range of services we offer is obviously the crisis pickup mm-hmm. so we would organize the pick up from our house mm. uh, she and her children mm. if her children are coming you always suggest the women the minor children please get them with you mm. yeah mm. because you need to look after them as well so the crisis pick up happens and once they are within our services we, there's a very detailed assessment that we do mm. and an action plan that's developed mm. what is what are the requirements so for example besides refugee accommodation does she need legal help is she happy to go and see a lawyer to see what her options are mm-hmm. in terms of can she get a protection order can she get a parenting order so that's the next option she she has she has got if mm-hmm. she wants to take up uh, does she want to go and make a police complaint and a police report mm-hmm. that's also an option mm-hmm. that we offer so we would support her so if social workers mm-hmm. who are well trained in that area oh, mm-hmm. who will support the client 
through that process or on the specialized side of the alkar undavu so we have social workers who do all the case work this mm. is all called case work mm. then there's the counselors mm-hmm. which i'm involved with as mm-hmm. well so we have the counseling team mm-hmm. then we look at the emotional well-being mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. so they look at the other settlement related well-being issues once they leave the relationship mm-hmm. yeah. then we have of course lawyers that mm-hmm. we work mm-hmm. with as well mm-hmm. and who are aware of our cultures so the lawyers go to the shila if a lawyer is okay approach cheyum but there is a financial yes. implication to that adinu ke engane irikkum avare ningal equip kiya yeah I think most of the women who come to us would be eligible for legal aid. There's something called legal aid. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if your income, if your individual income is below a certain threshold, uh, you know, legal aid you can get income. legal aid. Uh, okay. Yeah. So we also have a good set of lawyers who are very kind, uh-huh. you know, and many of them do pro bono as well. Mm. So we have that. Just like counseling, almost all our work is done pro bono. We don't we don't charge anything mm-hmm. to the client mm-hmm. because we feel if that's a service that we have to offer mm-hmm. for emotional healing and well-being. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So besides that and when the woman has gone through all that process, mm-hmm. then we also do the assessment of what would be her needs if she decides to go away and be independent. Mm-hmm. like um what how does she want to take english language classes mm. does she want to take driving classes mm. yeah mm. does she have basic aid or korchu kaaringale yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. and what was she doing back home mm. and are some of those skills transferable what can she be trained in mm. so we have a life skills program mm. which actually farida heads as well so mm. so then she goes through that life skills program mm. so by the end of the services that we offer mm. um she comes out safe Mm. confident empowered and self reliant so sheila baranu when she comes out safe mm. is, is there any time period or range for example ipo oralu vannu avaru three chelare three months undu copy peem chelare six months edukum chelare may take one year i yes. am just rough parayuvana angane endengil oru time period o angane endengilum ningal cheyarundo yeah so i think there's a huge difference between women who are permanent residents mm-hmm. and women who are not permanent residents mm. like we have a huge segment of indian indian women mm. who are brought to new zealand mm. for the purpose of marriage mm. by their resident or citizen husbands mm. and then abused and abandoned mm. so we have one safe house in auckland dedicated only for such women oh. so these women when they are abused and abandoned their husbands would draw the sponsorship mm. so they have no legal status to stay in the country oh. so we advocate for a special visa for them a special work visa which makes them legal mm-hmm. so that the children can go to school and uh-huh. they will be able to pick up the pieces of their life and you know get a job or something mm. so shakti advocated extensively for that visa category uh-huh. uh, which was which came into effect in 2003 uh-huh. so this was uh, a special work visa under the family violence a uh, category uh-huh. where she gets a visa to stay in the country irrespective of the sponsorship mm-hmm. yeah so um and such women because it takes a long time to advocate mm. for this they might end up staying 6 months to a year oh, with us uh-huh. yeah but those who are permanent residents will pretty much go move out in 6 weeks yeah 4 uh-huh. to 6 weeks because and i think one thing i want to emphasize is that um you know shakti doesn't go out and tell this women to get out of their houses or <laughs> get out of these relationships because mm-hmm. we want families to be united safe we and, want yeah. families mm-hmm. to be safe mm-hmm. safety is so mm-hmm. important mm-hmm. safety is paramount mm-hmm. yeah so we also want families to be together mm-hmm. but safety is important safety cannot be compromised not in the name of religion not in the name of culture mm-hmm. yeah and a lot of thing what people say is religion is not religion it's culture mm-hmm. and we have to differentiate the two things you know so when um when the women call us 90 more than 90% they have made up their mind mm. i'm leaving mm-hmm. because and when we talk to them we hear that they have tried everything oh. they have tried talking and giving their husband many chances they have tried talking to his family they have tried talking to her own family any friends they may have nothing changes Mm-hmm. and they can't take the abuse or violence anymore so that's when they call us so when the women call us we kind of know they've made up their mind and they declare it as well mm-hmm. the only part is what happens to me if i leave mm-hmm. that's the question they want to know, ask us if i leave with my children how will i survive who will support me 
what support is there for me that's the first question they ask us mm-hmm. so we kind of know they have made up their mind to leave and it's quite tragic because they came they come here with a lot of hopes of leading a good life with their husbands and children but it turns a different direction mm. and um and most of them will leave when they realize how the children are getting infected mm mm-hmm. Yeah. ഇങ്ങനെ എന്തെങ്കിലും ഒരു എക്സ്പീരിയൻസ് ഷെയർ ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റുമോ എങ്ങനെയാണ് ഒരു ഫാമിലി അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഒരു വിമൻ ശക്തിയെ അപ്രോച്ച് ചെയ്യുകയും ഹവ് യു ഐ ഐ ഗിവ് എ കപ്പിൾ ഓഫ് കേസസ് ഓഫ് ഇന്ത്യൻ ഇന്ത്യൻ ക്ലയൻസ് ദിസ് ഇസ് റിലേറ്റഡ് ടു ഡൗറി ആൻഡ് ദേർ ബോത്ത് ഹോറഫിക് കേസസ് യെ ഇൻ വൺ കേസ് ദി ഗേൾ വാസ് ഓൺലി ഐ തിങ്ക് ഷീ ടേൺഡ് 17 ഇൻ ഔർ സേഫ് ഹൗസ് ഷീ വാസ് വെരി യങ് യെ and she was brought um through the cultural marriage mm. visa mm. and then there was huge amount of dowry her parents had already paid the groom and his family over 75000 worth equivalent of new zealand mm. dollars mm. of cash money and mm. things like that but after coming here they kept her basically locked in the house did not give her the keys so if she ever left she can't come back oh. and they used to work in the farms so they used to take her she told me her, her day started at 4 o'clock in the morning mm. get up and cook for the whole family of 10 because he had his extended family there mm-hmm. um prepare help the, help prepare the children at the age of 17 at, mm-hmm. yeah she turned 17 so, when she came to mm-hmm. us so she was 16 at 16, that time yeah. yeah and then cook for the whole family clean the house come back and wash their clothes yeah not always in the washing machine mm-hmm. and wash then cook again the dinner meals in between all the time working in the farms with them. Oh. So she continued that way for about 6 to 8 months and saw no hope mm. and she saw herself going further and further down emotionally physically mm. Mm. and nothing was changing. Mm. She begged to have a different life. It didn't happen. Then one day she went to the sea area mm-hmm. and she jumped into the sea. Oh, unfortunately. Because she yeah. thought she didn't know there was help out there mm. she didn't know there was shakti out mm. there she didn't know whom to call mm. she thought if i call the police i can't speak english well my husband will turn it on mm. me and mm-hmm. you know i might go to jail or i might be deported because her sponsorship she was with her husband, husband. so and she she's, tho- she's new to the country as new well. to the country mm. yeah and she thought the only way out was to kill herself oh. so she jumped into the water and then one jogger who was jogging on the beach mm. saw the girl struggling mm. went and pulled her pulled her out oh. and he took her to the police station and the police called us so that's very sad and i think that's that's the one that made me start advocating for a legislation against dowry in new zealand as you know dowry is banned in india since 1961 mm. yeah but mm-hmm. it still happens. It happens but here there was no effective laws the police said what dowry i don't know what dowry is mm-hmm. you know so they had no teeth to make any um any uh, initiate any legal proceedings or you know uh, criminal justice proceedings against those who perpetrate mm-hmm. dowry mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, dowry itself is abuse as you know mm-hmm. we don't have to mm-hmm. say dowry mm-hmm. abuse dowry mm-hmm. itself is an, an abuse, abuse yeah. yeah so that that's when we started the ball rolling on the advocacy for dowry legislation then the more recent one was about i think 6 7 years ago which was horrific again um again this girl was brought to new zealand and her background was in it mm. so she was very well educated mm-hmm. and he brought her here under the uh, uh partner sponsorship mm-hmm. visa for cultural marriage mm. and then the dowry abuse started mm. said you parents didn't give me enough you didn't give me enough i'm giving you residency what are you giving me oh. so there's a lot of abuse based on residency Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm giving you residency so what are you giving me mm-hmm. and the abuse continued for a while until one day he told her I'm going to kill you I've had enough of you because I'd rather get rid of you and I can marry someone else mm-hmm. who can give me more dowry mm-hmm. so he forced her to swallow the you know the brain cleaner oh, he put it down mm-hmm. her throat so that was a horrific horrific mm-hmm. case so she ended up getting very extensive third degree burns mm-hmm. right through um her gullet her esophagus right down to the stomach lining was she throat. working that time no she wasn't oh, yeah she was quite new to the mm, country mm. not yet and she had very extensive burn injuries mm. and she lost her voice she couldn't talk oh. so when 
she ended up coming to us um we realized that she was almost dead most mm-hmm. in the point because this mm-hmm. is very severe injuries you know you can't breathe you can't talk you can't eat anything mm-hmm. so obviously it was very critical Critical. she had to go straight into the emergency and it was very interesting the doctors here the surgeons did not have the expertise to operate mm-hmm. on on the type of burn injury she had sustained oh. and then they had to network extensively and found one doctor finally who had experience in india mm. working on dowry cases of burn burn oh. burn cases so he did and some initial that, surgery ex- unfortunately that experienced doctor is from india yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> fortunately but, or unfortunately yeah, yeah, yeah but he was a local kiwi guy he was a pakia man oh. who had some experience there oh, oh. so he was quite kind so he did some initial but he still said i can't go all the way oh. she needs to go to india for further surgery mm-hmm. so then we had to work with the high commission and i'm very happy that the high commission responded positively mm-hmm. so but before then we had to get her mother here so then we had to get them back and get get her admitted to a hospital back home mm-hmm. and make sure the police protection was given so, so in case because his family threatened that mm-hmm. they would kill her so it was very very complicated case mm. but fortunately they managed to um do the surgery that was required i think she took over almost 2 years mm. to be able to even whisper to get a bit of her voice back mm. so it took a very long time yeah and then after the surgery we brought them back oh great yeah and the mother and daughter stayed in our refuge for a very long time mm-hmm. yeah and the last i know is that um she got considerably healed though the not fully healed mm. uh she's doing very well in the, in the profession mm-hmm. that she's chosen mm-hmm. and she got married to another nice man and oh. has a child oh. <laughs> such a rewarding so, feeling in that yes yes yeah mm. so but this was this is one of the most horrific cases mm-hmm. so uh, we had to step up our advocacy on dowry and forced marriage and underage marriage mm-hmm. we're seeing a lot of forced and underage marriage cases as well so we were able to get some law changes done mm-hmm. so now dowry is recognized under the family violence act 2018 mm-hmm. um and forced and underage marriage has is been included in the marriages act mm-hmm. where if 16 and 17 year olds are, are to marry they have to be presented before a judge mm-hmm. and the judge has to give permission for them mm-hmm. to marry so i think though that's a deterrent mm-hmm. um it's not exactly going to prevent occurrence of forced and underage marriage but we're glad that dowry has been brought mm-hmm. into the purview of this so now the police can't say we don't have any way with thoughts to mm. pursue this you know now they know they have to mm. so um yeah so that's that's the example from the uh, i think we've talked a bit of advocacy there as well what are the challenges you have faced in the what are the challenges you have faced initially yeah i think initially we, I would like to first appreciate and um you know hats off to our communities for um you know bringing about the change that we need to see mm. yeah so our communities are not what they were 20 25 years ago mm. they are more accepting mm. yeah mm. there's more awareness and they're calling it out they're mm. saying it's not okay mm. but 22 25 years ago uh, we got more brick bats than flowers mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so we at Shakti used to be called your home breakers you're breaking uh, homes you know and what are you doing this is for western people this uh, is not our culture uh, and you know you're encouraging women to come yeah, out of come the out, house yeah uh, and then now you're encouraging your young uh, people to come out you know what are you doing so we got criticized a lot uh, yeah and any network meeting they really spoke badly to us uh, people especially the men uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we faced all of that but and we always say one thing look um it is not shakti or anyone else who's breaking your home mm-hmm. it is the violence that's breaking your home mm-hmm. absolutely yeah so if you want your family to stay together stop the violence stop the abuse mm. <laughs> uh അങ്ങനെ ഒരു കൾച്ചറിൽ നിന്നും കിട്ടുന്ന ഒരു റെസ്പോൺസിനേക്കാൾ ഉപരിയായിട്ട് ഒരു പേഴ്സണൽ അറ്റാക്ക് പോലെ ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ എൻ്റെ ഫാമിലിയാണ് എൻ്റെ വൈഫിനെയാണ് നിങ്ങൾ സേവ് ചെയ്തത് സോ നാച്ചുറലി ഞാൻ നിങ്ങളെ അറ്റാക്ക് ചെയ്യുന്ന അങ്ങനത്തെ കേസസ് ഉണ്ടാവാറുണ്ടോ ഉണ്ടായിട്ടുണ്ടോ നോ ഐ തിങ്ക് ഐ തിങ്ക് വി ബീൻ ഓൾ വി ടെൽ സം ഓഫ് ഓർ സ്റ്റാഫ് ഹു ആർ കമ്മിങ് ത്രൂ ദ ന്യൂ വൺസ് ആൻഡ് യു നോ ദ ക്വൈറ്റ് വറിഡ് ഓ ആർ വി ഗോയിൻ ടു ഗെറ്റ് അറ്റാക്ക് ആൻഡ് ദൻ ഐ കൈൻഡ് ഓഫ് ടെൽ
Helen Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, we have received threats, but, you know, nothing manifested. Mm. Um, and I think that shows the law works, you mm-hmm. know, in New Zealand. Um, and, you know, the women themselves call out and tell us, like, there was one instance where uh, a young woman from uh, <clears throat> from uh, from from one of the Middle Eastern communities, I won't name the single mm-hmm. adult, um, and she was being forced into a marriage. She was bit, not even 16, you know, mm. and her counselor from her school mm. referred her to us mm. and said look you got to get this girl out otherwise she's going to be sent back home mm. and forced into marriage mm. so they dropped her off to us mm. so we said okay mm. so we took the girl to the refuge and then she had a very big extended family about 16 17 members of her family they mm. came through the refugee uh, reintegration you know mm-hmm. um, the whole family came and they were forcing her to marry a cousin overseas mm. Mm. Um, so for the purpose of residency, mm-hmm. she could sponsor mm-hmm. him and bring him here, mm-hmm. you see. So, and she didn't want to. She wanted to study, get a degree and have a job before she thought of marriage, which was a good noble thing mm-hmm. for her to do, mm-hmm. but they didn't want her to. So, um, and then there was a lot of manipulation that went on with her to bring her back. And then she called one of us one day and said, look, you know, I just got uh, information from my cousin sister, mm. my only cousin sister I can talk to, mm. who said that two carloads of men are coming <laughs> <laughs> to your shelter. <laughs> so the, the, she, she, she herself um, told um, us, you know, mm, mm. and we could just imagine that two carloads of men who are, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, so, and we're all women, you know, mm. sitting there. And what we did was the best thing that we could have done, we closed down the center mm-hmm. and we went home and we called the police mm. that um, we have, you know. So the police intercepted them, mm-hmm. basically told them to go back or they're going to be arrested. Oh. So I think that's the closest that came. Mm. But the police do respond police very support. quickly. Mm-hmm. If we ask, mm-hmm. they're very good. Mm-hmm. And even in New Zealand, usually if the case of domestic violence, mm. Police will come within six minutes. That's the time mm-hmm. frame, mm-hmm. unless something else has happened and they can't make mm-hmm. it. But they respond very quickly. So domestic violence is given very high priority, priority. Um, in terms of attendance uh, from the police. Yeah. So apart from that, no, no nothing mm-hmm. has ever happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has got the courage to attack. Yeah. Uh, isn't there a very marriage wound, forced marriage wound, divorce system, Elam Namalingine. Under the carpet, it is, it is there. And we have to say that. 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 We have to say to say that. We have 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 I would say, because that's something we are thinking that we need to probably work with the Indian High Commission, you know, mm. in terms of, and the immigration, New Zealand immigration mm. creates, creating wider awareness mm. within India mm. um, in terms of, um, so parents are aware before they get, you know, alliances from New Zealand mm. or any other mm. Western mm. nation mm. for that mm. matter. Because mm. I'm pretty sure it's not just in New Zealand, it's happening in Australia and all other Western nations. It's because it. residency to a Western country has got a very high value in India, mm. you know. Mm. But the girls cannot be sacrificed for that. Mm-hmm. And I think parents need to be aware of that. Mm. The best thing is for to send their girls with, if they want the girls to migrate, send them for education, mm. you know, let her find her own pathway. Mm. You know, that's mm. probably the best way because no amount of checklist can save her destiny when she comes here because mm. she just doesn't know mm. what she's getting into mm. and they don't know what she's getting into because here they make all kinds of claims. We've had claims where the women tell us, oh, they told uh, my family, my, my my husband's got a big fleet of cars, but <laughs> he's actually a salesman. <laughs> Or he's a driver yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a big mm. fleet. Uh, he, he's got a big taxi company. When the, she came here, she found he's actually a taxi driver mm. in the taxi company. Mm. So, 
So, you know, these kind of falsehoods are to how do the parents verify that? It's really mm-hmm. hard. Sheila, the Kodalum Arena, the Sheila is into counseling also. Right? Yes. Mm, so, Shaktila, Farida, uh, life skill handling, you, know, you yeah. uh, are responsible for the counseling part. Um, how did you come from that background? How did you come from that competency? Well, that's also an interesting journey <laughs> because, you know, I started with managing and capability development organized mm-hmm. for the organization, um, etc. So developmental work is where I was more involved in. But as I started interacting with the women survivors who came through our doors, um, I realized my journalism background helps me to an extent, mm-hmm. but... I have to come down and eat the humble pie, mm. you know. Mm. I have to be able to sit one-on-one and talk to the woman at a level that she understands me and I understand her. Mm. And I thought, while empathy was there, it wasn't very heightened at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Because journalism molds you to be a very different person. Different, yeah. And then you get, you have a massive ego mm. and, mm. you know, you know how journalists mm. are. <laughs> so... So I think I had to in many ways eat the humble pie. Mm. And I think it's the women survivors who taught me that, mm. apart from my own experience as mm. well. And I decided that um, I should study something mm. in New Zealand. Mm. And I asked around my colleagues, and what should I do, social work or counseling? Mm. They said, you know, counseling would be good for you. Mm. So there's not many ethnic counselors in New Zealand. Mm. So that's how I ended up studying counseling. And I really enjoyed it mm. because I had a flair for psychology. Even when mm. I was studying at university, I really loved that. Uh, the science of the mind. Mm. So I used to score top marks in that subject as well. So so I kind of thought, okay, let's give it a shot. So that's how I ended up doing my postgraduate um, uh, uh, diploma in psychology. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's, sorry, in counseling mm. from Unitech mm-hmm. at that time. Mm-hmm. And then I worked. Um, I did my hours, got registration. Mm-hmm. So I'm registered mm-hmm. counselor. Mm-hmm. And then I decided to do my master's. So I finished my master's uh, from the Auckland University in 2017, mm-hmm. 2017, 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, so you are a profession, uh, pro- professionally qualified counselor yes, now? Yes, I'm qualified and registered. And I did my master's degree. I, I was practicing even before, but when I finished my mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, graduate level diploma from Unitech. <clears throat> but um, yeah, so here we have to study counseling to be a counselor. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very different to what we think counseling is. Mm-hmm. When you study, you'll realize that. That's why I was talking about counseling. In a week, I have met with a girl mm-hmm. who has studied counseling, MSc counseling. She has to do a registration, right? Yes. She'll have to do registration to be uh, recognized as a qualified registered counselor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so she'll need to do it. And I think if she wants a job as a counselor in New Zealand, she'll need registration. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. And uh, do you do private practice here? Yes, I have I have a private practice as well because I work at Shakti part-time now uh-huh. because my private practice is a lot of demand uh, for me to be in that area. So that was growing. And so I thought I can't do both at the same mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've kind of gone part-time at Shakti and part-time I have my private practice, mm-hmm. uh, which I enjoy. So in Shakti, it's mainly... Uh, Asian, African, Middle Eastern women mm, and children. Mm-hmm. But in my private practice, I work with all, all ethnicities, ethnicities, all genders, and um, all ethnicities, yeah. So I get a good balance, and I uh, quite enjoy my work uh, in that space. So so counseling is, you know, like, um, I know in India we've heard, like, social workers call themselves counselors, you know. Mm. <laughs> Because counseling is not advice, you know. Mm. We are communities that love to advise everyone. Mm. <laughs> you know, we want to free fix advice people's problems. <laughs> free advice, unsolicited advice. Mm. We want to fix everybody's It's problem. Well. We are the great fixers, you know. And we don't so. know how to fix our problem. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fix others' problems. <laughs> so, so I think, um, so, but counseling is not that. That's mm. the thing, mm-hmm. you know. We tend to think counseling is advising someone. In fact, when you study counseling, they say the worst thing you can do is advise someone. Mm. So it's not about That's advice. Mm-hmm. It's not advising. So so anyone who wants to practice as practice here as a counselor, I would suggest please study, enroll and study because it'll, it's it's very different to what you imagine counseling to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to simple terms like explain to you that counseling, uh, private practice, let's say in the counseling in the broad picture or big picture. Yeah. So in 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 private practice the issues are quite varied like mm. in shakti it's more domestic violence mm. trauma sexual mm. violence mm. yeah mm. abuse and children impact of children witnessing violence and um also children also face sexual abuse as well mm. yeah so 
but in my private practice, I have got a wide range. Mm. So there is, um, uh, besides abuse and violence, mm. there is a lot of trauma, grief and mm. loss. Mm. Yeah, mm. people who lose someone dear to their lives or loss of job, that's mm. also equally traumatic. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, the grief and loss, trauma, uh, abuse and violence. So these are the predominant areas mm -hmm. where people come to seek therapy. Depression, anxiety, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, depression, anxiety, um, uh, self-harm, mm. yeah, self-harm. ഞങ്ങൾക്കാർക്കെങ്കിലും ഇതുപോലുള്ളൊരു സർവീസുമായിട്ട് അറ്റാച്ച് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റും അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഹൗ ക്യാൻ വി കോൺട്രിബ്യൂട്ട് വി ഓൾവേസ് വെൽക്കം വോളണ്ടിയേഴ്സ് യുനോ സോ ദ ബെസ്റ്റ് വേ ടു സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ഇൻ ഏജൻസി സച്ച് എസ് ദിസ് എസ് എ വേ ഐ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് എസ് എ വോളണ്ടിയർ എസ് വെൽ സോ ഇഫ് യു സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ഓഫ് എസ് എ വോളണ്ടിയർ ദറ്റ്സ് എ ബെസ്റ്റ് വേ ടു ലേൺ ഹൗ ഹൗ ദിസ് തിങ് ഹോൾ തിങ് വർക്ക്സ് ആൻഡ് വെൻ യു വോളണ്ടിയർ യു ഗെറ്റ് ദ ട്രെയിനിങ് ട്രെയിനിങ് ഇസ് സോ എസെൻഷ്യൽ ലൈക്ക് ഹൗ ഡു യു വർക്ക് വിത്ത് വിമൻ സർവൈവേഴ്സ് ഹൗ ഡു യു വർക്ക് വിത്ത് ചൈൽഡ് സർവൈവേഴ്സ് So uh, there is an essential training program mm -hmm. that they have to go through mm. before they start interacting with the client. Yeah. Mm. So there are many different ways. Some of them volunteer on a crisis line. Mm. So they have day jobs, mm. but they might do once a week night shift on the phone. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they can, they'll be trained to do the crisis line mm. and then they can be rostered for once a week or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that's one option. So we have some volunteers in that regard. Some volunteers would say, look i'll do the food run i'll pick up food donations mm -hmm. and then drop it off to the safe houses mm -hmm. so they feel good about that mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. or some of them will say i have i have medical i have skills mm -hmm. to be a, as a doctor mm -hmm. um so you know i can offer free free checkups mm -hmm. so it, many different ways mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. കൗൺസിലിംഗ് ഒരു പ്രൊഫഷനായിട്ട് എടുക്കേണ്ട സ്റ്റുഡൻസിനോട് എന്തെങ്കിലും ഒരു അഡ്വൈസ് പറയാനായിട്ട് അവർ എന്ത് സബ്ജക്റ്റ് പഠിക്കണം അല്ലെ എന്തായിരിക്കണം അവർ അവരുടെ സ്റ്റഡീസിനോടൊപ്പം ഫോക്കസ് ചെയ്യേണ്ടതെന്നൊന്ന് പറയാൻ പറ്റുമോ സോ ഐ തിങ്ക് ഇൻ ഇൻ ന്യൂസിലൻഡ് യു ഹാവ് എ സ്പെഷ്യൽ ഡിഗ്രി ഇൻ കൗൺസിലിംഗ് ആ സോ ഇഫ് യു ഹവ് ഇഫ് യു ഹവ് എ ബാക്ക്ഗ്രൗണ്ട് ഇൻ സൈക്കോളജി ദെൻ യു ഇറ്റ്സ് ഫെൻറ്റാസ്റ്റിക് യു ക്യാൻ എൻറോൾ ഫോർ സ്റ്റഡീസ് യു നോ ദിസ് വേരിയസ് യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റീസ് ഓപ്പൺ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി വൈക്കാട്ട് യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി ക്വൈറ്റ് എ ഫ്യൂ മാസ് യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി സോ you can enroll for a counseling degree mm. which is not much available in india, india. Mm. like yeah so you can straight away study to be a counselor mm -hmm. yeah that's probably the best way to do it yeah or if you have if you have a if you have been a psychologist back home mm. you can always talk to the nzac which is the new zealand association of counselors mm. to see if they are able to cross credit some of mm -hmm. that hours that you've Our done back in india mm. as a counselor if they can cross credit mm. you might be asked to do some professional development course here mm -hmm. uh, especially in working with maori mm. uh, that's become very essential with an nzac how to work with maori mm. so you might have to do that course mm. and then or you might have they might suggest you need to go and do some hours with a local agency in new zealand mm -hmm. to get some experience ഷീലാ ഇവിടെ ന്യൂസിലൻഡ് ഓർഡർ ഓഫ് മെറിറ്റിൽ മെമ്പർ ആയിട്ടുള്ളതായിട്ട് മനസ്സിലാക്കുന്നു ഷീലയുടെ എന്തെങ്കിലും ഒരു പോളിസി ചേഞ്ചിലോ ഡൊമസ്റ്റിക് വയലൻസ് ലോയിലോ എന്തെങ്കിലും ഷീലയുടെ പ്രവർത്തനങ്ങളാണോ അതിലേക്ക് ഷീലേനെ എത്തിച്ചത് ഹെറോൾഡ് for coming on board tv1 mm. has done stories um on forced marriage underage marriage dowry abuse tv3 has done a lot on domestic violence in general in ethnic communities as well as dowry abuse especially mm -hmm. the uh the case i talked about where the young woman was forced mm. to swallow the drain cleaner mm -hmm. so that story was extensively covered by tv3 as mm -hmm. well and i think uh, this is part of the advocacy mm. when we go to the media it's not for our own publicity it's to expose an issue sure and i think that's when the government sits up and takes notice that mm. this is not 
um, Shakti just banging at our doors and mm. saying this is happening and we refusing to believe, the journalists are doing a good mm. job on this. Mm-hmm. So, and the Kiwi journalists. So mm. that kind of opens up the eyes of politicians and government departments. So it took us overall 10 years mm. and a lot of advocacy, writing, making submissions, mm-hmm. going to a select committee hearing mm-hmm. in parliament, all that was done, petitions mm. um, being sent. And we also did international advocacy at the UN. Mm. Um, so there is this convention called CEDAW, mm. which is the Convention for the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women. Mm-hmm. So um, and NGOs can report to them. Mm. So New Zealand reports as a government, mm. they report state party reports every four years mm. and shadow, um, shadow agencies like NGOs, mm-hmm. shadow mm-hmm. agencies are called NGOs. Mm-hmm. They make their own independent report. Mm. So we've been reporting, we've reported twice already mm. and the third report has just gone out um, to to the for submission uh, quite recently, mm. so we bring up these cases. Mm. So when it goes to an international forum, mm. it's quite embarrassing for the New Zealand government mm. because the New Zealand Minister for Women's Affairs is there at the UN mm. at the mm. hearing, mm. and the committee asks her, mm. "What are you doing about mm. this? What are you doing about that?" So <laughs> she's answerable there. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So there's international pressure as well. So mm. it's not just national pressure, international pressure. So that's how we managed to get the laws change and I was there from the start of it and until it finally manifested so I guess somewhere along the line someone recognized that <laughs> എല്ലാം കാര്യങ്ങളാണ് നമുക്കൊരു ഡൊമസ്റ്റിക് വയലൻസിൻ്റെ കാറ്റഗറി പെടുത്തിയിട്ട് ഹൂ ഓവർ ഈസ് സഫറിങ് ഫ്രം ദോസ് കൈൻഡ് ഓഫ് ഇഷ്യൂസ് ക്യാൻ അപ്രോച്ച് ശക്തി ദ മോസ്റ്റ് ടെല്ലിങ് സൈൻ ഓഫ് ഡൊമസ്റ്റിക് പീസ് ഡൊമസ്റ്റിക് വയലൻസ് ഓർ you knowing that you're not in a good relationship is when you have fear of your partner. Mm. That's the most telling sign. Mm. Are you worried that when he comes back home, he'll be in a bad mood mm. and he's going to take it out on you? Mm. Are you worried that I can't talk to him about this now because he's going to get angry? Mm. So I'll have to wait and watch when I can talk to him about it. So mm. you're literally walking on eggshells around mm. your partner. Mm. Mm. that itself is an indication that things are not right in your relationship mm-hmm. yeah so that's one of the most telling signs mm-hmm. now domestic violence or family violence or intimate partner violence in many different ways it's called it as per law it's defined as not just physical abuse psychological abuse mm-hmm. sexual abuse mm-hmm. sexual abuse can be in various forms either complete sexual isolation mm-hmm. or various other forms mm-hmm. of sexual abuse including mm-hmm. marital rape mm-hmm. so people think in our cultures i'm married to him mm-hmm. he can do what he likes with mm-hmm. my body but no not under the laws mm-hmm. so if he has forced himself on you or he's asked you to perform sexual acts which you don't mm-hmm. approve of you don't want or without your consent that's considered marital rape in new zealand and it's a criminal offense mm-hmm. it straight goes to the criminal court mm-hmm. strangulation or attempted strangulation mm-hmm. like you know in our cultures where oh i'm going to kill you i'm going to kill you and you know try and go at somebody's throat or wag a knife and say no you can't do that here so the minute you wag a knife at someone it's a criminal offense mm-hmm. so that's not acceptable you can't threaten anyone you can't wag weapons or things at someone you can't throw things at someone mm-hmm. you can't throw things and punch the wall because that's considered intimidation mm-hmm. intimidation he's not touching you mm. but he's breaking things around you mm. that's a bit domestic mm. violence mm. considered domestic violence strangulation attempted strangulation yeah forcing you do, to do things you do not like mm. isolation mm. isolating you mm. yeah saying why do you need to go out and meet your friends mm. we are happy here why mm. do you have to go mm. yeah why do you have to talk to your mother and father every day Mm. how much money you wasting on the phone mm. phone bills yeah mm. so these are all things relating to isolation mm-hmm. then there is immigration sponsorship mm. visa sponsorship mm. which is related to all the other cultural mm-hmm. uh, factors that talked about mm. which is dowry forced marriage underage marriage honor based violence mm. female genital mutilation these are all forms of domestic violence now mm. so to be aware of that mm. some of them are even more advanced go straight into the criminal court mm. not just in the under family violence act uh b- besides isolation there is using male privilege mm. that i'm the lord and master here this is my house mm. yeah mm. i brought you here mm. so those kind of tactics are also considered abuse mm-hmm. yeah economic abuse mm. like if he doesn't allow you to work mm. 
that mm-hmm. is considered abuse mm-hmm. yeah and if you work and he asks you to put all his your earnings into his account mm. and he controls the money mm. he gives you pocket money that's considered abuse mm. yeah mm. so these are all the forms of abuse that are here is as you can see it's not just physical mm. physical is the open part of it mm. we know mm-hmm. but the hidden part of it that's psychological mm-hmm. that's huge mm. and that's what we have seen happening huge in our communities as well mm-hmm. because domestic violence is is not just an act of violence it comes from the need for the person who is abusive to have power and control over the victim mm-hmm. so the base at the root of domestic violence is the need for the perpetrator to have power and control over the victim mm. that lies at the root of domestic violence mm. so if if you find yourself in this situation then you know you have help you can call shakti mm. um shakti's number is 0800 shakti mm. uh this is an 0800 number mm. or hit 0800-74-2584, i believe mm. so 800 shakti runs 24/7 it will be attended to and anyone who thinks they can they need some help mm. and um you know or whether they want immediate help or they want some information mm. um so they can keep that and bear that in mind for future help mm. then feel free to call up shakti mm. psychological abuse is huge, huge. i mean mm-hmm. physical abuse is ob- obviously it's there mm. sexual abuse is very much a component of that physical abuse again mm-hmm. because of the how women think that if i'm married my body belongs to my husband mm-hmm. he can do what he likes mm-hmm. it's quite hidden mm-hmm. yeah so it's only when we do the assessment they 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 say we okay. ask those specific questions then only they say and then they say oh i don't th- i didn't think that was abuse mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so but it is abuse because what marital rape does it it kind of crushes your spirit you know in many ways mm-hmm. it kind of demeans you you know and you kind of start hating your own body mm-hmm. after a while mm-hmm. so it is very harmful mm-hmm. so that's very much part and very much linked to uh, physical abuse but we have seen a lot of isolation tactics mm-hmm. yeah especially with the new women who are brought into the country mm-hmm. so and isolation is used as a tool so she doesn't have any network she mm-hmm. can't talk to anyone mm-hmm. she don't spread what no. she's going on she she has no friends mm-hmm. and often not encouraged to work mm-hmm. we've seen quite a lot of that happening mm-hmm. those who can go to work have have possibilities mm-hmm. to talk to someone or or each other yeah friends. so so that's very much there and emotional abuse so psychological and emotional abuse isolation is part of psychological and emotional abuse mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that's that's quite that's quite high mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. it will be normal to call out mm-hmm. domestic mm-hmm. violence right mm-hmm. now it's not normal to call it out mm-hmm. like but, nammal oru gpa ipo vilikkina pole normal yes mm. yeah so there's, there's no shame or embarrassment mm. in declaring that i've been abused mm. you know there's no shame and embarrassment for a perpetrator saying abuse like mm. i'm abusing i need help mm. we haven't reached that yet it's only when those who perpetrate take ownership mm. and say we've done something we should never have done Damn. but we need help mm. we need help to change mm. the minute society reaches that stage then we can say there is some real good hope that hopefully you know violence in our communities will reduce it will end mm-hmm. especially violence against women and children തീർച്ചയായിട്ടും വളരെ മനോഹരമായ ഒരു സ്വപ്നമാണ് എനിക്ക് ഷീലയുടെ കേട്ടപ്പോൾ തോന്നിയത് ഇത്ര നേരം ഞങ്ങളോട് ശ്രോതാക്കളോടും ഡൊമസ്റ്റിക് വയലൻസ് എന്താണെന്ന് വളരെ ഡീറ്റെയിൽഡായിട്ട് എക്സ്പ്ലെയിൻ ചെയ്തു എങ്ങനെ അതിനൊരു സപ്പോർട്ട് ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് എടുക്കാം എന്നും പറഞ്ഞു മുന്നോട്ട് ശീലയുടെ ശക്തിയുടെ എല്ലാ ഫ്യൂച്ചർ പ്ലാൻസിനും എല്ലാവിധ ആശംസകളും അതോടൊപ്പം തന്നെ ശീലയുടെ പേഴ്സണൽ ഡ്രീമായിട്ടുള്ള ആ ഒരു വയലൻസ് ഫ്രീ ഒരു രാജ്യം നമ്മൾക്ക് ഉണ്ടാകട്ടെ എന്നും ആശംസിക്കുന്നു വളരെയധികം സന്തോഷം മലയാളം എഫ് എമ്മിൻ്റെ ശ്രോതാക്കളോട് ഇത്രയധികം സമയം ചെലവഴിച്ചതിന് വളരെ സന്തോഷം താങ്ക്സ് ഫോർ ജോയിനിങ് വിത്ത് അസ് Thank you very much Sunil Sindhu for giving me the opportunity to talk about this issue and I much appreciate uh, your time and energy and I think I really enjoyed this time with you thank you <laughs> thank you thank you